Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we're working on the Stoker steam engine still. Uh, and in the previous episode, uh, we started taking out everything, all the parts inside of this casting. And uh, the video was running a little bit long, so we decided to break it up into a couple of episodes. And we're going to pick back up right where we left off before in uh, this big job of getting this thing taken apart. We we're working on the crankshaft back here and uh, getting the... We're, we got the, the main bearing off, and now we're getting ready to start into taking the eccentrics apart uh, to get everything out. Next thing I want to do is loosen up these. Those are castle nuts. There are supposed to be a um, cotter pin going through those, but I sure don't see one. Uh, it should just come out. Let's uh, see if we can do those. Let's see if these come apart as easy as everything else has. And it's turning all the way through. We'll probably have to... Uh, that's going to be a pain. Maybe I can get a set of vice grips on that back side. I would have thought those would have been either a, you get a hex socket head in them or or hex head on them where you could at least hang on to them, but no such luck. Oh. Get a longer pull handle on that. So the back side of that head is flat, so it shouldn't turn. I mean, it's going to turn a little bit, but I don't think it'll make a revolution. I don't think I just went far enough for it to catch. So maybe I won't need the vice grips on there after all. There it goes. Now there's two more of those up underneath the bottoms down here. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get to them. Catch up to where I'm at. Um, what my game plan is, is I need to be able to pick these valve rods up and out of the way so that I can get to the bolts on the bottom of them. And to do that, I need to get these little uh, valve stems down here out. So what I did was I actually put all this back in here because this is supporting this, uh, this casting. I'm having to unscrew this. I got a pipe wrench on that valve stem down there and it's screwed into the end of the casting. But I was scared that I was going to be putting too much twist on this casting it might snap it so by putting all this back in here temporarily is supporting that end down here so that i'm not hopefully not putting any pressure on there and risking breaking that casting because that would not be a fun repair to have to make i got this one coming out i'm not worried about galling up that valve rod because uh we're going to have to replace it anyway. And that thing was screwed in there a long way. I think we're about to come out with it. All right. That's out of the way. So now I need to do the same thing on this one. Of course, my wrench isn't going to travel is easy on this side. So the problem is, is that I'm, the wrench is hitting the casting down here in the bottom. I can't 
get on this far side enough to really pull it like I need to to get the stroke that I need. So let me uh, see if I can come up with a plan B. Quick update, I got a smaller wrench and was able to get it on there and I got that valve stem out now. So what I wanna do now is take these back up out the guides here and see if we can pick that valve rod up. So we'll just pull these all back out. Okay. Now I'm hoping, yep, that I can uh, pick these up. Let me see if I can get this piece down here to pivot. So to get these to pull up, I'm gonna to have to pivot this little block and it's rusted into place. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little spacer up underneath the bottom here. Just something to support that up. That pivots on that pin, but that pin is stuck in there. So I'm just gonna see if I can break it loose. Yes, yeah, pivoting up now. Let's see if that's enough. That's getting close. All right, let's see if I can get this to bend on out of the way. There we go. All right, now I can raise that up and get to where I can loosen that one out. Let me see if we can do the same thing on this other one. There we go. All right. So now we need to get these um, cotter pins out of here just on this castle nut that holds the um, this uh, valve connecting rod over the eccentrics that actuate them so um, let's see if we can get those out there's one I'm just using some nippers here. I'm just cutting the ends of those off. And I'm not worried about this stuff dropping down in here right now because I'm gonna clean all this out really well before we uh, put it back together. But uh, normally you wanna make sure that you're not leaving anything down in that crankcase, obviously. All right. Get in here and hopefully break these loose. There's that one loose. Those things are really in there tight. There it goes. Okay. Got bronze in these eccentrics. 
that one comes off. Bronze bushing stayed in there. I want to take that out. There it comes. All right, I'm going to put this back in here. Put these back together as well just so that they stay together and there's some shims that were in this one make sure they stay in there as well all right and we'll get the other one out the same way well, we got all of our valve connecting rods out of here. That's out of my way now. The next thing I really want to try to do is get these cross heads out. And I'm down to where I've got two bolts that are back here on this side holding this one down. I got this one as loose. This one is loose. There was a bolt here, but once I got the valves uh, across our valve connecting rods out, I was able to get a wrench on that one. And there's one more back here on the back, right back in here. So. I had to go find me a crow's foot, inch and a sixteenth inch crow's foot, and I'm hoping that I can now get that down in here and get these out. So I got that one in there. Let's see if I can get this in. I can. So let's see if I can loosen that one up. All right, that broke loose. Let's see if I can continue to work this one around. Problem is, is I can't really get as much of a turn on it as I need to. To get it out of there. There we go. Well, not quite. <laughs> All right, I'm able to just to move it with the, the crow's foot. So, it's giving me just enough leverage. I think we got it. At least to move a little bit. Now, let's see if I can get the wrench in there another direction. I've only got about an eighth of a turn that it'll make in this little hole that I'm in. Look at that. This is not the way to use a wrench. <laughs> but it's getting the job done. I'm just kind of coming in the top of it there. I think I'm going to have to put the crow's foot back in there to get another bite on it. If I can just get it up a little bit more. Maybe we'll get lucky here. That's all I got there. Yep. <laughs> Persistence is going to win today, I think. This one, the whole stud is coming out, not just the nut. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm going to move that back, get this bolt out. Now, this whole thing here should be loose, but it's not. It's super stiff. If I can raise it up, I can slide the whole thing forward and get the rest of those bolts out. So let me see if I can... Uh, going up. That's high enough. All right, now, let's see if we quit. got those out. We'll slide this whole cross head forward. Now we can get in here and pull these out. Finally. Now I can get a socket on it. There we go. These pieces come out. Those are going to have to be replaced, I'm sure. Let me slide it back here. Hmm. There we go. And now we can pull the whole cross head out. So this bottom piece, this has just got basically a block of Babbitt poured around it, which is a bearing material. And uh, it slides back and forth in this channel. Of course, it's all rusted and pitted right now. One of the things I'm going to have to figure out is uh, the bottom of this needs to be smooth and man i can feel it feels like a i don't know probably a 16th or 32nd of an inch drop right there from where the bearing was sitting and it was somewhat protected up underneath it to where it was rusting on either side so uh, that's going to be a challenge i'm worried about that later we we'll probably have to do some machining down in the bottom of that to get it cleaned up but we'll worry about that down the road there's a shim it goes on this uh, bearing here. That fits right there. I'll put this over here with it. All right, so now I need to get the other cross head out. I got one more bolt back there. I won't let y'all bear with me, but hopefully I can get it out using the same techniques. Things are starting to look different now, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> We're making good progress. This has been a lot more work than I thought. So let's see. These need to come off. These are the uh, bearings for the, for the main uh, pistons. So we got, um, again, some bronze bearings in here. And that doesn't look too bad. That comes off like such. All right, this other side, really I need to rotate the whole crank. Let's see if I can uh, put that crescent wrench back on there and have any luck with this now. If I can get it to break loose, I think it'll spin pretty easily. It's just frozen in there like everything else. This thing's been sitting for so long. So uh, let's see if we can get that crank to spin now that it doesn't have anything holding it in there except really they got the friction from this bottom half of this bearing and I'm assuming there's bearings on either side here there's got to be in there that should be all that's holding it on so let's see if I can break that got my 24 inch crescent wrench on here take my lead hammer put a little shock on it and see if we can break it loose that's just that bearing moving there that's not the whole thing going. That's too much. All right. All right, this looks like those might come out pretty easy. Okay, 
you got a, this is just a cover. There's a bronze bearing in there and that's the end of the crankshaft. So um, tell you what, uh, let's see if we can take these bolts off and this whole piece should just come off the end. So let's give that a try. See it moving a little bit. All right, I was able to get this out enough where I could get a uh, gear puller on this thing. And I think I can just pull it on off the rest of the way with this. I had it coming. I ended up having to go and uh, borrow a gear puller from the museum. I didn't, I've got several over in my stash, but I didn't have one that would go up to 10 inches like this. Uh, but they had one out at the museum, so no big deal. But we'll just pull that right off. And um, with any luck, we'll be in good shape here. All right, that's all that she's got without putting a spacer in there. Let's see if I can pull it off by hand. I think it's right there about to come off anyway. Yeah. All right. That side is off. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And those bearings there. Those bearings there don't look too terribly bad, so um, I think we're in good shape. Same thing on this side. I used my lead hammer to bump it out until I could get a, the gear puller in there. And we'll pull her right off. There we go. And it looks like the crank is uh, turning too. Now we can put the wrench over here on this. And let's see, I need to get this other bearing out of here. There we go. And there's our bronze bearings on this one. They again appear to be in decent shape, which is good. And uh, I'll put them back together and we'll have them for later on. So now I'm gonna get my crane over here and we'll pull that crank out of there. All right, let's take her up. There she comes. There we go. All right, that's the last part out of this thing. And that bearing looks pretty good down in the bottom. Well, let's take a peek down inside this thing. A little bit dirty, but <laughs> everything's out. I've still got to get the studs out and I've got a big stud extractor coming that should fit over these. I don't have it in the house yet, but uh, I'll wait until I get those to pull them out clean them up. All in all, the casting here, uh, the biggest challenge, I think I mentioned this before, is we're going to have to do some work in here with the crosshead slide. A lot of rusting and pitting in there. I'm going to have to do some figuring on how we're going to get all that resolved, but um, I think it's doable. The All the bronze bearings, they appear to be in good shape. Uh, I'll know better once I get the things cleaned up and start checking dimensions and see what's in tolerance and what's out of tolerance. But hopefully uh, we're going to be able to salvage all those. Let's take a look at the parts we pulled out of here. Well, here you go. Uh, <laughs> some of all the parts. Uh, I've, I've got to get everything again cleaned up. There's still a few things I need to get taken apart. I need to get these wrist pins out of the, off the crossheads. Um, yeah, I, I need, I still got to get the head, the cylinder rather, and get all the pistons out of that and all the studs pulled out of that. 
um, uh, uh, looking at things right now, I, I, I think this is a doable job. I've got some challenges I'm going to have to deal with, but um, uh, after I get things cleaned up and examined a little bit better, I think I'll have a better idea and feel for where we go from here. But um, I, I, I think it's going to be doable. It's going to be a lot of work, but I think it's going to be doable. So without having everything cleaned up and everything right now, stuff that I can see that I know I'm going to have to deal with, new valve rods, new piston rods, obviously we had to cut those, um, new wrist pins for the crossheads, these are going to have to be come out. One of them is actually broken, um, so we're going to have to make two new of those, get them to, to the proper dimensions and all that kind of stuff. The guides for the crossheads are going to have to be uh, completely made new and replaced. They're just too rusted and pitted as they are to be usable. Uh, and like I mentioned before, we're going to have to deal with all the pitting down in that casting that they slide on as well. Um, I know that I got some other stuff. All the hardware is going to have to be replaced. Uh, these castle nuts, I'll probably have to make those. Um, one of the big challenges that I really see that I'm concerned about is that uh, one of the, the journals on the crankshaft is severely pitted. It looks like it was in just the right position where there was the, the joint between where the two brasses came together and it had collected water in there. So um, we're going to have to see what we can do to fix that. That might be the biggest challenge I've got. I've never dealt with having to build up and remachine a journal on a crankshaft before. And um, I'm not even sure how to go about doing that. I'm probably, I'm not even sure that I can do that in house. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some research on that. All of these journals are gonna have to be cleaned up. I need to check them all to make sure they're in tolerance. But uh, this crankshaft is probably gonna have to get sent out somewhere uh, to get it worked on because I, I don't think that's something I can really do in house. Uh, I know that the cylinders are going to have to be bored and sleeved um, and so forth. So I've been talking to a couple of the YouTubers and uh, I think a couple of guys are going to give me some hands on making some parts. We're going to kind of turn this into a collaborative thing and um, some different people are going to make some different parts for this kind of to speed things up and help it go along. I'm going to be doing a lot of it in house myself. So anyway, that's where we are right now. Uh, I should know more once I get things cleaned up here, guys. And we'll keep you in the loop, keep you informed, and uh, hopefully we'll start the process of making all these new parts, uh, repairing what needs to be repaired, and getting the Stoker engine back up and going. It's going to be a job, but uh, I think we can do it. I really do. That's going to be a wrap, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comments are always appreciated. And leave me that thumbs up at the end of the video if you like what you saw. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video.